am offering this resolution that the committee direct the chairman to issue a subpoena for relevant documents and testimony under oath from Donald John Trump in connection what? with the January hey, yeah. on the United Boo. States. Boo! 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 Ah! Gravy! From Hollywood, it's Jimmy Kimmel Live! Tonight, George Clooney and Julia Roberts. Celebrities read mean tweets, plus music from Omar Apollo with Cleto and the Cleto. And now, Jimmy Kimmel! Because, uh, oh, what a day it was here uh, today in America. The award-winning limited series, The White POTUS, is back. And uh, if you haven't been keeping up with the January 6th hearing so far, here's a quick recap to get you up to speed. Previously on January 6th. President Trump followed the course recommended by an apparently inebriated Rudy Giuliani. The mayor was definitely intoxicated. What they were proposing, I thought, was nuts. The claims of fraud were bull****. There was ketchup dripping down the wall. And then we went for lunch. We went for tacos. President Trump was yelling and aware of the rioters' chance to hang Mike Pence. It was a different tone than I'd heard him take um, with the vice president before. Do you remember what she said? Her father called him. The P word. The president reached up towards the front of the vehicle to grab at the steering wheel. He's become detached from reality. Tonight, I say this to my Republican colleagues who are defending the indefensible. There will come a day when Donald Trump is gone, but your dishonor will remain. Yeah, well, there you go. So we haven't, um, the last hearing was, uh, j was July 1st. It felt a lot like Game of Thrones coming back, but instead of dragons, people Dragons Roasting People Live, Liz Cheney was doing it. And the hearing <laughs> began at 1 o'clock Eastern today, like all the soap operas do in the afternoon. <laughs> Days Off Our Lives is the title of this one. And man, oh man, did the ketchup hit the wall. A lot of the evidence in these hearings came from Trump's inner circle. This is like if OJ had been turned in by his gloves. These are his people. <laughs> Chairman of the committee started by pointing out that almost all the evidence came from Republicans, not Democrats, and that the people who stopped Trump from trying to steal the election, like Mike Pence and all those who repeatedly told him the election wasn't rigged, are also Republican, or should I say were Republican, now they're in the witness protection party. But <laughs> we learned today that Trump knew the election wasn't stolen, even told Mark Meadows, his chief of staff, that he didn't want anyone to know he lost because it was embarrassing to him. So he had said something to the effect of, I don't want people to know we lost, Mark. This is embarrassing. Figure it out. We need to figure it out. I don't want people to know that we lost. But is that more embarrassing than continuing to say you won an election two years after <laughs> you lost that election? Man, did his parents do a number on him. I don't know what <laughs> happened there, but some of the more disturbing moments came from the video footage of uh, Chuck Schumer, Steny Hoyer, and Nancy Pelosi hiding from these rioters during the attack. It was like a reboot of Home Alone starring your grandparents. They were <laughs> desperately trying to get help from the police and the military, because these lunatics, not only were they threatening violence, they were using the Capitol as a bathroom. I just got off with the vice president. And I got off with the vice president-elect. So I'll tell you okay. But what we left the conversation with, because he said he had the impression from Mitch that Mitch wants to get everybody back to do it there. Yes. I said, well, yes. we're getting a counterpoint that is, we could take time uh, to clean up the poo-poo that they're making all over them, literally and figuratively in the Capitol. You understand things got so bad, the Speaker of the House had to say their words, poo-poo. <laughs> and maybe the worst part is they planned this. This is Steve Bannon, one of Trump's right-hand men less than a week before the election, telling a group of I don't know who in China that this was the plan. And what Trump's going to do is just declare victory, right? He's going to declare victory. 
it, but it, that doesn't mean he's the winner. He's just going to say he's the winner. The Democrats, more of our people vote early that count. Theirs vote in mail. And so they're going to have a natural disadvantage, and Trump's going to take advantage of it. That's our strategy. He's going to clear himself a winner. So when you wake up Wednesday morning, it's going to be a firestorm. Yeah, and he, that's exactly what happened. And then we had one of Trump's other big mouth loony goons, his uh, longtime cohort, Roger Stone, also days before the election, saying this. Let's just hope we're celebrating. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I suspect it'll be, I really do suspect it'll still be up in the air. But when that happens, the key thing to do is to claim victory. Possession is nine tenths of the law. No, we won. F you. Sorry, over. We won. Yeah. You're wrong. F you. ABC. <laughs> I should. Let's get right to the violence. There it is. It's right on tape. It's crazy. I, after seeing all this evidence, it's crazy that the only Trump being held in prison right now is Melania. And, <laughs> and at the end of this, at the end of the hearing, the bipartisan committee voted unanimously to subpoena Donald Trump to make him testify before the House, which unless the House is of pancakes, that's just not going to happen anytime. <laughs> like sending a cease and desist to a hurricane. But at this point, I don't know what they need to hear from him. It's all there. The case against Trump is about as obvious as an episode of Scooby-Doo. And yet, <laughs> there are still those who believe all these lifelong Republicans who work for Donald Trump who every day suddenly made this all up. I mean, it's either, either they all got together and made it up, or he did it. Those are your only two choices. And here's the thing. If being an American means... Uh, accepting and abiding by our Constitution, and after hearing all this, you still think what well, Donald Trump was okay. And I guess you're not an American. I, I think that makes you an illegal, and we know how you feel about those. So, uh, to all of those, I mean, I guess pack your stuff and make an orderly departure from the country. And this is something, uh, with all this going on, this is the email the Trump people sent to his supporters last night. With the subject, did you hear? Donald Trump is ranked number one presidential golfer in history by a landslide. <laughs> by a landslide. <laughs> First of all, no one heard that, okay? And secondly, if it was, this is like flunking out of school but bragging about how good you are at recess. <laughs> but you know the old saying, when the facts are on your side, pound the facts. When the law's on your side, pound the law. And when you have neither of them, pound 11 Diet Cokes and start an insurrection. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, Blobby Jones has got many other investigations to worry about right now. The Supreme Court today rejected his, uh, Trump's request to intervene in his dispute with the Department of Justice over the classified documents he, he absconded to Mar-a-Lago with. The court denied Trump's request by a unanimous vote, and a new story from the Washington Post says Trump was more directly involved with these boxes than we knew. After Trump got the subpoena to hand over the records, he personally ordered one of his employees to move the documents in the boxes from the storage room at Mar-a-Lago to his private residence at Mar-a-Lago. Remember how he's ranting and raving about the agents searching Barron's bedroom and going through Melania's closet? That's because he put the documents there. <laughs> the employee originally denied moving the boxes, but then changed his story after the Fed showed him security video of it happening. <laughs> so then he admitted Trump told him to do it. Trump got caught by his own security. It is astounding how dumb this, he's such a bad criminal. If Donald Trump wasn't born rich, he'd be one of those bank robbers who passes the teller a note with his name signed at the bottom. <laughs> the video and the confession are major pieces uh, of evidence that mean I think they almost have to indict him. It's crazy of all of Donald Trump's many victims, who in a million years would have thought the National Archives would bring it. it. Mr. Forbes magazine foiled by a bunch of librarians. It's beautiful. Right now, he's got the FBI boxes thing. He's got January 6th. He's got a rape case against him. He's got the attorney general in New York. He's got the criminal uh, in interference in the election investigation in Georgia. And w But when will this man stop this insanity and leave us alone? Never. 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 Never, never. Never, 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 never. Ever, 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 ever. Ever, 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 ever. 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 Ever is a long time. Hell yeah, yeah, it is. Feels long. Feels very long. Uh, I wanna, oh, going back to Georgia, 
This is something, even on a day dominated by Trump, Herschel Walker still somehow managed to make news. Uh, this time, uh, well, here, a, a month or so ago, he claimed his grandmother is Native American. I found something out, then I'm gonna end this. I found something out. My mom just told me that my mom, uh, grandmother was full blood Cherokee. So I'm Native American. I was like, oh, hello. So I'm, I'm, a, I'm a super mutt. I don't know what I am. But this one was so funny. This one was so funny. I said, uh, Mom, uh, why you never said anything to us? She said, back in my days, a lot of the Native Americans treated worse than blacks. Oh, yeah, that is funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious, really, Herschel. So if he is a quarter Cherokee, uh, I guess that means Herschel Walker is a Dallas cowboy and an Indian at the same time. <laughs> Only problem is they looked into it, turns out he isn't. His grandmother is 0% uh, Cherokee. Neither is he, nor are any of his little papooses with his many women. So I don't know, maybe Trump will start calling him Poco Heisman now. He does. <laughs> and while we're on the subject of, um, of genetics, this is interesting. According to Harper's Magazine, Trump supporters are 50% more likely than Biden supporters to have donated sperm, um, which, you know, is fascinating because they, they found, research has found that political beliefs may be genetic, which would mean the, the MAGA babies are gonna outnumber us. And it's a scary possibility for the future, which is why President Biden took a break during his trip to LA today to encourage Democrats to get to work. I'm Joe Biden. And I approve this message. Times have changed. This ain't your father's Republican Party. The MAGA Party is a different breed of cat. And they're not just threatening to take control of Congress. They're threatening to take control of our willy milk, too. <laughs> Republicans are flooding our banks with sperm. And if we're going to beat them, we're going to have to beat ourselves. <laughs> if you're a male Democrat, who can still make gravy in your chinos, get on down your local sperm bank and squiggle your wiggle for America. They got a whole mess of ways to get you in the mood to make trouser mayo, like hotsy totsy pinup gowns, catalogs of pretty ladies trying on brassiers, and Susan B. Anthony. <laughs> what was I talking about again? Oh, yeah. If we want to save our country, we're going to need you to pump that pappy pickle. That means you, your friends, even your old pal Joe, just like riding a bike. Okay, bad example. Come on, Jack. Jack. Thank you, Mr. President. All right, the moment you've uh, been waiting for. Social media isn't just about fighting over politics. It's also a place where you can go to sling mud at your favorite celebrities. Every so often, we take a moment to uh, shine a light on the evils of Twitter by letting famous people read some of the poisonous comments about them. And we've done it again in an all new edition of Mean Tweets. <laughs> Brian Cox looks like a super gruff, sophisticated ball sack. <laughs> I would hate having a combo with Chris Rock. He is one loud ass black individual. <laughs> this person is a psychic. Matthew Broderick can eat a d he peaked at 17. <laughs> Kevin Bacon is what Ryan Reynolds would look like if he did a ton of heroin. <laughs> Idris Elba is ugly. There, I said it. <laughs> you. They should cast me in all of Dan Levy's parts because I'm annoying and gay, but not completely insufferable, and I'm also hotter than him. <laughs> Nothing says gay rights like this tweet. Kirsten Dunst looks like if Jewel got cosmetic surgery, but then got hit by a bus the day they removed the bandages. Thank you. Andrew Garfield has fat people hands, or at least the hands of a creepy school custodian. <laughs> That is untrue and incredibly inventive and creative. And also, Jason Momoa is a creep. <laughs> no one should feel anything in their ovaries for him. Uh, <laughs> you. I hope that fat George Clooney is selling loads of tequila right now. I am. Why is Salma Hayek trending? 
Is her titties out? No. Where's the camera? John Stewart sucks. China's <laughs> Come on. China doesn't have a <laughs> You're thinking of Florida. Why does Halle Berry's knee look like the face of that guy who came out of the book that Harry found in the restricted section at the library at Hogwarts? <laughs> you need to stop looking at my knees. Like, the show is up here, from here to here. <laughs> the worst part about Curb Your Enthusiasm is they portray Larry as fault. <laughs> no one wants to Larry David. You know what? Couldn't agree more.